For our last example, which I'll do relatively quickly, we'll look at, actually I'll write that in in a moment. So let's look at matrices with matrix multiplication. So if you take any pair of matrices, well, let's try checking that it's a group and see where we get. So first we look for the identity. And that's okay because, you know, oh, by the way, I should say n by n matrices with the operation of matrix multiplication. So if I take the n by n identity matrix, if I multiply that by any other matrix, I get that same matrix back. So the identity exists. Associativity is something that you often prove in a linear algebra course. I if you want to look it up on Wikipedia or write it out yourself, that's good. I'm just going to appeal to authority, though, and say that matrix multiplication is, in fact, associative. And secondly, after thirdly, we need to check that inverses exist. And in fact, inverses don't necessarily exist. For example, if I take the zero matrix, that doesn't have an inverse. Likewise, neither does this matrix. Or this matrix. So none of these have inverses. And we'll recall that there's a thing called an invertible matrix. And those are actually the ones that I want to focus in on. So invertible n by n matrices with the operation of mul matrix multiplication. Invertible n by n matrices have an inverse. That's why they're invertible. So therefore, inverses are OK for this particular subset. This group, by the way, is called GLN. So the name of this group is GLN, and that's short for General Linear Group. One thing I should point out is that I haven't told you what goes in the matrix. Uh, usually we're going to be talking about real numbers. And in fact, this is often written GLNR for invertible matrices with real entries. Sometimes you look at GLNC. That's a very, very good group to look at. Complex ma invertible matrices, so on and so forth. They're all called the general linear group, but you have to specify what goes in the matrix. All right, so now we've seen the definition of group. We've seen subgroups. We have an idea of what a cyclic group is. And we've seen a whole lot of examples. So I think that's probably good for now. Thanks.